Hello and thanks for joining me today. Today I will be discussing renal artery imaging. My name is Dari Nwaka. I'm a registered vascular technologist and also a diagnostic medical sonographer. If you'd like more on this topic that um, I'm discussing today, you can um, check my book on Amazon, Vascular Technology Made Simple. The book is also available on Kindle as well. If you'd like uh, further um, information as well, you can check www.divinescanning.com. And on my website, you will find um, CMEs, you would find exam protocols, and um, you would find also review um, questions for the board exams. Renal artery imaging. At the end of this webinar today, um, Participants will be able to understand indication for renal artery duplex, describe the anatomy of the renal artery, and also identify renal artery stenosis and diseases. Here's a beautiful image of the renal artery um, duplex. Um, you can see that renal artery there. You can see the main renal artery, the segmental artery, the arcuate, the interlobar artery um, within this kidney. The anatomy of the renal artery. So you want to know that the right renal artery travels posterior to the IVC and right renal veins. You want to know that the right artery is longer than the left. The right renal vein is shorter than the left. The left renal artery travels behind the left renal vein. The accessory renal artery can arise off the aorta. And I've seen a couple of uh, accessory renal artery coming off the aorta. Now, rarely would you see an accessory renal artery coming off the common iliac, SMA, and uh, inferior mesenteric. With that being said, it does happen. You will, see, you could see an uh, accessory renal artery coming off the common iliac, SMA, and IMA. Um, there are literatures on this topic as well. However, I have not seen uh, an accessory renal artery coming off the uh, iliac, SMA, and IMA, but it does rarely occur. Why is renal artery uh, duplex performed? The study is performed to evaluate renal arteries and kidneys for evidence of renal artery stenosis or intrinsic disease. Abdominal brewery in a patient with uncontrolled hypertension, new onset of uncontrolled hypertension, renal artery stenosis prior to medical management, um, again, rule out renal vascular hypertension, and also elevated creatinine or BUN. These are some of the indications for performing a renal artery duplex. So progression of known renal artery stenosis, renal vein occlusion, renal artery bypass graft follow-up, fibromuscular dysplasia in a patient with a known family history, renal artery aneurysm seen on CAT scan or other imaging study, angioplasty and or stent placement, renal transplant and follow-up renal transplant. These are all indications for um, a physician ordering a renal artery uh, duplex. What are the limitations of renal artery um, duplex? Um, fresh surgical incision slash drainage, uh, patient with irregular bleeding, breathing, because occasionally you would need the patient to take in a deep breath. The patient, sometimes some patients are unable to hold their breath, which can make it technically difficult for the technologist to image the renal artery. A patient with underlying bowel gas, um, sometimes some patients, even with them being NPO, are still extremely gassy. And body habitus, um, that is a patient who is um, a certain weight. Um, imaging of the renal artery itself can be quite uh, difficult. So what is the patient PREMP? You want patient to be NPO, so um, nothing to eat after midnight. Um, reason is because this helps to reduce the bowel gas. Um, if patients are on blood pressure medication, you want them to take them with tiny sips of water um, so that you can still image these arteries um, and they are, the patient also has a normal blood pressure as well. You don't want them with a high blood pressure because they've not taken their medication for renal artery duplex. Um, study must be performed first thing in the morning, especially in diabetics, 
So you want to image the study first thing in the morning so that patient, once they're done with the study, they can go eat. And also diabetics, they cannot, um, they have to eat um, after a certain period. So you don't want them to be NPO for too long um, so they don't have a drop in their sugar uh, levels. When scanning the uh, renal artery, there are a set of protocols that you need to follow. Um, you want to scan the aorta and observe the branches arising of the aorta. Um, you want to, you know, make sure you kind of wink at your celiac artery there, your superior mesenteric artery. And of course, you get to your renal arteries. Um, you want to use a low frequency scan hair transducer. Um, you want to document the aortic measurement in longitudinal and transverse at the suprarenal, just the renal, and infrarenal, and measure it um, out of the outer. You want to measure the common iliac artery bilaterally in longitudinal and transverse. Um, you want to know diameters should be measured outer wall to outer wall at region of greatest dilatation. And then you want to identify your internal iliac arteries bilaterally and measure, if possible. Um, sometimes it is hard to visualize the internal iliac artery. But when imaging a renal artery, you first of all kind of want to take a look at the aorta first. And you want to rule out any abnormalities within the aorta itself. And then you can image your uh, renals. Um, you want to identify and doppler the renal vein. You want to measure bilateral kidneys and identify a typical small kidneys. Kidney sizes ranges between 10 to 12 centimeters. You want to view the kidneys for cysts, masses, hydronephrosis, and stones. You want to check for thrombus, dissection flaps, or stenosis, and or occlusion within the renal vein. And then you want to obtain spectral doppler of your aorta using a 60 degree angle or less at the level of the superior mesenteric artery. So once you visualize your renal vein, then you want to get a velocity of the aorta um, at the uh, level of the SMA. Then you want to doppler the renal arteries using a 60 degree angle or less starting at the osteum. And then you want to get another measurement at the proximal, at the mid and at the distal segment of the renal arteries. You want to obtain spectral Doppler at the renal ilum and the segmental arteries in the upper, mid and lower poles of the renal parenchyma. As you can see the image to the right side of the screen, you can see your acuate, interlobar and segmental artery. You want to identify and document accessory or multiple renal arteries if visualized with color flow. Segmental renal arteries arises off the main renal arteries. Interlobar arteries arises off the segmental arteries. And your acuate arteries are branches off the interlobar arteries. Okay, so you want to take a look again at that image on the right and you can kind of see at what segments your acuate, interlobar, and segmental arteries um, are located. And as you can see in these images here, you can see in the first image here, you have the aorta right at the center, and you have the right and left renal artery um, coming off the vessel. And in the second image, you can see the superior mesenteric artery in relation to the right and left uh, renal artery um, in arrows. You can see the right and left renal artery there with the um, arrow there. And you can see the normal waveforms in a renal artery. Um, you can see that the resistive index is um, lesser than 0.7, which we'll be discussing a little further on. And um, the last image here, you can see uh, the high-grade stenosis at the right renal artery at the origin. Um, velocity in this image was about 600. So again, this image here um, shows you a, a normal renal artery um, coming off the aorta, a normal velocity in a renal artery, and what an abnormal renal artery velocity um, looks like. Um, interpretation of results. Um, a normal renal artery velocity is less than 180 centimeters per second with a right renal aortic ratio of less than 3.5. A less than 60% um, renal artery uh, stenosis uh, velocity ranges between uh, it's a greater than 180 to 200 centimeters per second. And again, the renal aortic ratio stays below 3.5. As you approach a 60% or greater stenosis, um, your velocity is definitely greater than 180, could be 200, 300, but your renal aortic ratio also is greater than 3.5 at this um, segment. How do you calculate your renal aortic ratio? You want to um, get your renal artery uh, velocity, the highest renal artery velocity, 
divided by the uh, aortic velocity at the um, at the region of the SMA. So you take your um, aorta velocity at the SMA, as we discussed earlier, and you want to um, divide your highest renal artery velocity divided by your aorta velocity at the SMA segment. Also, you want to note that an aorta velocity of less than 40 centimeters per second cannot be used in calculating a renal aortic ratio. A renal artery stenosis of greater than 60% is considered significant. And again, your normal RI should be less than 0.7. Um, an RI of greater than 0.7 is um, abnormal. Now, again, you want to keep in mind that different vascular lab has different criteria. So you want to be aware of your uh, lab criteria when um, interpreting your results. Interpretation of results, we're going to continue with that. Again, as discussed earlier, an abnormal RI is in native kidneys is indicative of intrinsic renal disease. Renal RI should be done at the level of the aquate or interlobal arteries. Okay, RI is calculated using the peak systolic velocity minus the end diastolic velocity divided by the peak systolic velocity. Abnormal RIs in patients with a transplanted kidney is indicative of rejection. So again, you want to be aware of this. You can see this image here with the abnormal RI um, as um, compared to the previous uh, slides, which I showed you of a normal uh, renal artery uh, image waveforms. Dilatation. What is a renal artery aneurysm? Renal artery aneurysm is the dilatation of a section of the renal artery. Patient can be symptomatic or symptomatic. Asymptomatic patients um, usually are incidentally found on CT or an MRI of the abdomen. So usually uh, most patients are asymptomatic and usually um, a renal artery aneurysm is seen on patients who possibly went for a CT or MRI of the abdomen, abdomen for something totally different and um, happen to find a renal artery aneurysm on this patient. Symptomatic patients present with hypertension, abnormal abdominal pain, blood in urine known as hematuria, and renal infarction. Treatment for renal artery aneurysm is endovascular repair. Surgery is indicated for renal artery aneurysm of greater than two centimeters. Patient with renal infarct or iris patient with increased chance of rupture. So here there's a 78 year old patient uh, followed yearly with ultrasound for a right renal artery originally found on CAT scan. Um, in this image you can see the right renal artery. Um, you can see the right renal artery aneurysm in this image right here. And you can see that this, um, the last, uh, sorry, the size of this artery aneurysm is about 2.45 by 1.68 centimeters. Again, you can see the renal artery aneurysm in this image. You can see your aorta. You can see your IVC in that image as uh, in relation to the renal artery. Renal transplant duplex. A renal transplant duplex is usually located in the extraperitoneal space between the peritoneum and the iliacus muscle of the right or left iliac fossa. The kidney is anastomosed to the external iliac artery or internal iliac artery and the external iliac vein. So you can see in the first image, you can see your transplant kidney there. You can see the right renal artery and the renal vein in that first image. And here also you can see um, <clears throat> in the second image, a uh, waveform of the right um, renal artery. This image was obtained from uh, Fosniak. Um, and, um, this image actually um, gives you a very uh, great understanding of a renal transplant in um, the anastomosed uh, vessels. Renal transplant duplex is performed to evaluate complications likely to arise from a transplanted kidney, such as hydronephrosis, hematoma, urinoma, perinephric abscess, lymphocele, and kidney um, echogenicity. So um, they, when I say kidney echogenicity, is it um, 
echogenic kidneys is it um um is it hypoechoic kidneys so um that's one of the reasons why um a renal transplant um, duplex is performed in this first image up top you can see that kidney with hydronephrosis which you can see the dilatation there within the kidneys and the second image there um, shows a lymphocele um, on the kidney um, post-transplant. Ultrasound examination of a renal transplant, you want to evaluate the renal allograft artery and vein. You want to evaluate the external iliac artery or internal iliac artery and external iliac vein. <clears throat> you want to doppler the anastomosis site thoroughly. Most stenosis occurs at the site at the uh, site of anastomosis. You want to record the peak systolic and end diastolic velocities in these segments. You know, want also want to evaluate the segmental or interlobar arteries, or both actually, with spectral Doppler analysis at the inferior, middle, and superior pole of the transplant. And for further readings on uh, renal transplant duplex, you can. Um, Pick up my book on Amazon that would give you a detailed um, a further explanation of renal transplant duplex. After renal transplant duplex, vascular technology should include the following. Decreasing size of renal transplant in comparison to previous study. Increase the size of renal transplant in comparison to previous studies. So a decreased size of the renal transplant or increasing size of size of the renal transplant is indicative of possible rejection. Um, high resistive index, low resistive index, hydronephrosis, all of this must be included in your final report when you turn in your report uh, for renal transplant duplex.